In this video, we're going to be learning how to properly install unstructured for LangChain so that we can deal with many document types. For example, loading of regular files like .py files, .txt files, or .json files. Also, the problematic one, .pdf files. So we will be able to use PDF files at the end of this. And also just image files. We'll be able to read the text out of images. And also URLs. We'll be able to read the text out of URL. I'll be putting all the links that I'm showing you in the description. First of all, we need to read the manual for inst installing unstructured from Langchain. There's some instructions, but they're not fully complete. I'm also using Miniconda for my virtual environment setup, but you can use anything you like. You're going to have to install Git. You can install it by going to the link provided and go to downloads and select it for your system. We're going to be installing it for Windows. You need to install PyTorch. Just go to PyTorch, get started locally and select your options and you'll get the command to pip install it. Also, we're going to be, you should read the installation instructions, which are at the unstructured as well. But I found this Medium article, which was much easier for me to install the text round part of it. So I'll be using that. We also need Poplar. We need to download it and then unzip it and place it in our working directory using 7-zip. I'll put all these links in the description. We will also need Tesseract. We'll just need to download it. Both for this Tesseract and for Poplar, we're going to have to place them in our path environment variable as well. I will be putting all these instructions in Patreon as a post for my Patreon supporters, but let's begin. First, we need to create a conda environment using this command. To use this command in Visual Studio Code, you're going to need to come here with this arrow and create a command prompt. And I have already actually created a virtual environment named unstructured. You can name it anything you like. So normally we just paste this here. This will create a new virtual environment named unstructured with the Python version, which you specify. In this case, we're using 3.10. Next is to activate the environment which you have created. So you would just copy this and paste it here. I have deactivated my environment so we can see. So after that, we will be in your virtual environment of name of your choosing. In this case, unstructured. It is best to upgrade your setup tools and upgrade pip. You just would have to copy these commands and paste them into your command prompt in Visual Studio Code or your standalone command prompt. This will upgrade your setup tools and the next command will upgrade your pip installed. If you get a permission error with pip upgrade, then use the exact same command with dash user at the end of it. After that, we install the regular length chain and open AI. You would just Paste it and run it. As you'll see, I already have every requirement satisfied because I have already done this. You would have to do the same for pip install OpenAI. And I put instructions here that please do read the length chain documentation on unstructured file uploader and also the installation instructions at unstructured. After that, just go to the Git's website and then download it and install it. I have followed, it's a bit of a complex install, but I haven't changed anything in the default installation except pointing it to my Visual Studio Code IDE. And we pip install unstructured local inference. Again, this is same as everything else. Pip install unstructured local inference. I have already done this, so I won't install it. If you end up getting, for whatever reason, an error related to NumPy, then upgrade your NumPy for Detectron. You would do this with pip install numpy upgrade, but I'm, I'm hoping that this won't be necessary for most people. After that, we pip install Cyton and then pip3 install torch, torch vision, torch audio. This is the instruction we have gotten from the torches website. Keep in mind that this will only install the torch for CPU use, so it'll be slower. So if you want, if you have a good GPU and you want to use it, then you can actually install it with GPU support as well. You would just need the instruction to CUDA 11.6 or 11.7, and then you would use this command for GPU support. Next, we'll be using the Medium article I mentioned for installing Detectron. I'm so glad I ran into this. It, it actually creates an environment, which we have already done, and the pip install Cyton comes from there. And after that, the instructions is to use git to clone the Detectron repository into your working folder. Here, we have done this. Right here, Detectron 2 folder exists. After that, we type in cd Detectron on our command prompt to get into that folder like this. And we will enter the Detectron folder. After that, you have to pip install dash e. You have to include the dot in the end. Don't forget that. 
from the folder which is the detect ROM2. After you've done this, then you back away from that directory by doing cd dot dot and return to your working directory. Instruction is here, and then you would install pip install opencv dash python. After that, you pip install layout parser, layout models, and tesseract. Then we continue with pip installing python dash magic first, and the pip install python dash magic dash bin next. Then we go and download the 7-zip from 7-zip.org. This is to unzip the file, which we will be downloading from Poplar. The link is here. It will also be in the description. This is to download Poplar for Windows. After you download Poplar, unzip it and place it into your working directory, just like this here. We have done it in the Visual Studio Code. And then you have to take note of where the bin directory is. You can copy, the, just like right-clicking and copy path. You just have to get the path in your hard drive to this directory and then you would have to add it into your environment variable path to add the popular spin directory path to your environment path variable you have to go to windows search for environment and select the edit the system environment variables i'm just using the text manager so it'll block my opening eye keys and whatnot anyway once the, once you're here click the environment variables and this window pops out and down here you would have to go to path and then click edit and from here you would have to add a new one and just paste the path right here and then by clicking ok just get out of it i have done this right here the second line is for poplar so this is the path we're talking about it directs to the poplar's bin directory You can find a path to bin directory by on VS Code by right clicking, copying the path. And if you do that, as you can see, it'll give you the path. And this is what you'll have to put in that path environment variable. After that, you'd have to go to Tesseract's GitHub. Tesseract is a Windows installer. Just download it and install it. There are instructions probably for other operating systems too. I have downloaded the 64-bit and installed it. While you're installing, make sure the path which you are installing Tesseract to, because you're going to have to put this into your environment path variable as well, just like we have done for Poplar. After it is installed and after you have it in your path, then just simply pip install PyTesseract like this. So this is pretty much it. This should cover for what we were looking for. Anyway, I have skipped LibreOffice, LibXML, and LibXSLT. LibreOffice is for Word documents and stuff like that. I will put these links in the description if you want to look into it, just as I have, if you want of document support. But the last thing, which you must not forget, is to actually execute this code, which is to install NLTK dependencies for unstructured. You have to run this command. It will download the punct and then you have to import NLTK and then punct the average perceptron tagger. After which time, you should restart your VS Code and make sure your unstructured environment is active in VS Code by checking Python interpreter by clicking Control Shift P. So if you press, after you've done all this, now you can actually just start loading the documents of your choice. You just have to import the unstructured file loader, which I'm using in this case. And we're also going to be using the unstructured URL loader. I've selected some files. Here's a Python file called the test underscore bash from Langchain. A JSON file is a Wikipedia article about physics. This dot bash is just a unit test. And then a PDF of the language models or few shot learners paper, which inspired the attention based large language models. And also an image. We're going to be also using this image. So let's just demo this real quick. First, we're loading test.bash and then assigning it to a loader using un unstructured file loader. After that, we're assigning docs to loader.load, which we have defined right here. And then we're just printing the document up to 100 characters. Let's just do 200, and then we just run it. You see, when you run this, you get the first 200 characters from the, this pi file right here, which means we were able to successfully load the document. Next, let's take a look at the JSON file, and then save the file and run it. And we were able to load this document successfully as well. Next, let's try the PDF. Save the file and run it. Uh, doing this with PDF, especially if you're using the CPU version of Torch, takes a while. It can take a couple of minutes for long files because it's using a lot of image recognition and also object character recognition, OCR. So you're just going to have to wait. I'm assuming the GPU version would be much faster with the GPU version of PyTorch installed.
Uh, it took a minute or two, but it was able to load the paper and print the first 200 characters. So P loading PDF was successful as well. Let's try an image. So we're just going to be reading the text out of this image. Just give the name of the file because it's in our working directory. Let's just run this. Now, here we go. This is very cool. We were able to read the file, image file. Infographics use striking, engaging visuals to communicate information quickly and clearly. And if you look right here, actually, that's what it says right up here. This is pretty awesome. And finally, let's comment this uh, file loader out and uncomment our URL loader. I'm just, I've just put in two URLs from the LangChain documentation. So if you save this and run it, we'll be able to get the text out of these two documents and load it for use in LangChain. And as you see, we have done just that. This is pretty quick. So this is awesome. So this really covers most of the documents that you probably need to deal with. If you need to deal with Office, Microsoft Office documents, you need to look into installing LibreOffice. But other than that, this should be pretty cool. I'll put these instructions for my Patreon supporters to Patreon, but feel free to install everything from the video. All the instructions are here. Please join the Echo Hive server. I'll put that in the description as well. All the links necessary will be in the description. Please let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you in the next video. I hope this is helpful.